Hi everybody, it's Mark, the Family Woodworker. Hey, this week we take something inexpensive like this Bic pen and turn it into something really cool. Makes for a great gift too. To begin, we'll need one or more of these inexpensive Bic pens, but we're only really looking for the ink in the tip insert for this project. We're also gonna need some hardwood that will shape into a pen. I've got some smaller pieces of exotic hardwood, but maple or oak or hickory that you might get from the lumber yard will work too. Just avoid pine, cedar, or poplar, as they tend to be too soft to work with. I'm also going to make two sets of cuts on the table saw. The first cuts will be set at a quarter inch, and you never want to take that small of a cut on the inside of your rip fence. You're just asking for a nasty injury. Keep it safe. I'll set up a stop block on the outside of the blade so I can hold the stock against the fence. I'll need to adjust the rip fence each time for the wood to lightly touch the stop block and then all cuts are going to be a quarter inch thick. This leftover piece of walnut from a previous project is first. I also have a small block of cocobolo wood I originally used to make some knife handles. It's got a lot of cool wood grain. This thick piece of red paduk will make for another nice variety. After taking those quarter inch slices, I'm going to cut the pieces down to one half of an inch in total width. The next step is to notch in a center core to accept the ink tube. You can make enough room for the eighth inch wide ink tube by centering your cuts on the table saw, or you could also use a router table and an eighth inch straight bit. But I'm only taking a small sixteenth of an inch deep centering cut that I'll finish out with a long drill bit later. When I put the two pieces together, that center cut hole will help guide the drill bit down the middle. I'll do this step for each pair of the pen halves. Now of course we have to glue each of the two sides together, being careful not to use too much glue and block out the center core. I also didn't show it being cut, but the purple tinted wood variety you see on the bench is called Purple Heart, one of the favorites of my wife and daughters. After getting these all clamped up, we'll let them sit overnight. The next day. After unclamping the pen blanks, I'll spend most of the day just shaping the rectangular tubes into something round and smooth on the wood lathe. The last step before turning the blanks on the lathe is to finish drilling out that eighth inch hole down the center of each blank. My choice is to use an eighth inch long drill bit, but you could also drill in from both ends to finish out the core. That got it. Though most of the work will be done on my hobby lathe, you don't need this tool in order to round out your pen blanks. A little further down into the video, I'll show you two different options that you'll have using tools that you might already own in order to make your own custom pens. Also, if you own a small wood lathe and wanted a more complex pen project, you can buy two-piece mechanical pen kits to glue your wooden pieces on. Using this Coco Bolo blank, let's walk through all the steps I took to make the shape. First, we want to get rid of the hard edges, rounding out the blank into a smooth cylinder. I'll also taper the ends of the blank, being careful not to go too far on the end holding the pen tip. Using a couple different smoothing chisels, I'll make some finer cuts in order to get the pen blank as smooth as I can get it, and then save on the sanding time. Sandpaper grits varied from 150 to 400, and it pays to take more time than you think you need at the higher grits to make sure that all the sanding lines have been smoothed out. I finished up each blank with an 800 grit polishing pad and you can see the purple dust from the Purple Heart along with the orange dust from the Coco Bolo. To finish you'll have a number of choices to add some gloss to your pen but I've had really good luck using CA glue which you may recognize by another brand name, Super Glue. You have to work quickly as this stuff hardens in an instant, but I get a really great gloss shine by wiping on multiple layers of thin CA glue. It provides a really hard finish, it's very glossy, and it holds up really well over time. I'll just fold up small pieces of paper towel, I'll wet the end, and immediately wipe down the length of the blank. The lathe distributes the coating pretty evenly. This Coco Bolo blank turned out really pretty, but I have five more pen blanks to cut. I'll add some grooves and some other tapered features to style up some of the other pens. 
With all the basic shaping done on the blanks, I carefully cut off the rough ends from each pen, which shows a pretty cool before and after perspective on each small block of wood. And while I seemed intent on checking each pen for length against the insert, I measured and turned the blanks to a length that I knew would be long enough. Well, it was a good time to take a break and hit one of my favorite snacks, an oatmeal cookie and some Red Pop. Put that cookie down! Come on, man, it's my first break today. Now! Well then, back to work, I guess. I wanted to add another flourish to the Purple Heart pen I made for my wife, incorporating a small synthetic amethyst stone. I chose a drill bit that would make the right diameter hole and made a small indentation to accept the stone. While the center core of the pen will take that 1 8 inch ink tube, the tip of the pen needs to be a little wider to accept the rollerball nib. This turns out to be a 5 32nd inch hole for those big pen inserts, and the hole only needs to be drilled down about a half an inch. I centered each pen on the drill press, but you could carefully do this on a vise with your hand drill. Just checking things to fit, and we're okay. But what if I don't have a wood lathe? Well, I promised I'd show you a couple alternatives for making these pens without a wood lathe, and the first option is to set up a belt sander on a pillow or even in your bench vise with a 40 or 60 grit belt. You simply start with rounding over those hard edges and keep rolling the blank on the belt until it feels more like a cylinder than a rectangle. You can also taper the ends of the blank with the belt sander too. With or without a belt sander, after knocking down those square edges, you could also fit the blank into a drill press and continue to shape it there. Vary your sandpaper grits for a smooth finish. This is actually pretty smooth. A little longer than a few minutes later. For my six pen blanks, I still need to finish the tapering and the shaping of the cutoff ends. This uses the same hand rolling technique against a sanding disc or a sander to get the taper you feel looks best. Be sure to check the end that receives the pen insert to make sure that you don't take off too much material. The tip of the pen insert still needs to fit inside the diameter of the wood blank. The opposite end of the pen will still have that 1 8 inch hole visible and that bugged me a little bit, so I chose to fill it with some blackened epoxy. I mixed a little black mica powder with some 5 minute epoxy and filled in the ends with a small dab of the mix, sealing up with painter's tape and then letting it cure. The next day the epoxy ends of the pen needed one last round of finish sanding to get them smooth. I was careful not to scratch the shiny finish on the pen and just concentrated on the ends. I finished by using the same 800 grit polishing pad to finish the top and bottom tips. One last finishing step to seal up and add some gloss to the sanded ends of the blank using more CA glue. I built up four layers on all pen blanks. Again, I needed to work really quickly as the CA glue dries in seconds. Final assembly. I think this was a pretty cool and relatively easy project to create some gorgeous pens out of rare woods. The sky was the limit in how I chose to shape and style the pen blank, so it was pretty easy to tailor a design to a particular person and make personalized gifts out of each creation. Thicker pens and darker woods for men, and purple, my wife's favorite color, for her. Best of all, you don't need to buy an expensive wood turning kit to make these pens, and Bic provides an endless ink color palette to choose from. The pen inserts are also incredibly easy to replace. Best of all, it'll be a personalized gift that you handmade. One more thing. So it occurs to me that making caps for any of these pens would be kind of difficult, but making a pen holder for the top of your desk, well, that's pretty easy. So I've got a small block of this Coco Bolo wood still left over. I thought I'd cut off a square piece. I measured the Cocobolo pen to find the right diameter and put in a small hole, and that's really all we're going to need to make this a decent pen holder. With a little finish, it'll look great on my desk. But each one of the pens turned out really fantastic. I love the wood grain in the Cocobolo wood. It's really a pretty. As for the red tone pen, this is Paduke, and that looked great also. I especially like the Purple Heart pen that I made with the Amethyst Jewel embedded 
in the pen blank. That looks great too. And the Coca-Cola wood pen holder and pen look really fantastic on my desk. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. We hope you really enjoyed the video. Maybe give the project a try. We also hope you give us a thumbs up and you subscribe to the channel. Take care. Thank you.